All right. Now, I always remember first time I came here and I told people to do that. What did it sound like? God loves you. That's right. Now it's, and I would say now we're at about 30%. So we'll try one more time with excitement, with the joy. How many of you are going to heaven? Hey, amen. Hey, that's the best answer yet. So now look at your neighbor with that joy and that excitement and say, God loves you. Amen. You know, we talked about it uh, in one of the classes this week. If you're trying to bring people to Christ and you walk up to somebody and say, you know, Jesus died for you and I go to church and I love it. You should come too. I'll see you later. Who's going to want to go, right? But if you show up, you know, you know what? I'm a sinner and Jesus died for me, but I'm going to heaven and I want the same thing for you. And our church is awesome. And so you should come too. They just might come. So. Have that joy in your heart. It's not just for you. So I'm going to read from the uh, Passion Translation, which is really out there, I know, but these words fit tonight really, really well. It's Psalm 96. And so uh, go ahead, sing your new song to the Lord. So how many of you think you do not sing well? So does God care? No. Who are you singing to? Singing to God. So. Let everyone in every language sing to him a new song. And don't stop. Keep singing. Make his name famous. Tell everyone every day how wonderful God is. Give them the good news of our great Savior. Take the message of his glory and the miracles to every nation. Tell them all about the amazing things he has done. For the Lord's greatness is beyond description. And he deserves all the praise that comes to him. He is our king. He is our God. And it's right to be in holy awe of him. Amen. And that's what God wants. And hopefully that's where your heart is. All right. And so before we get to play music, and uh, I just want to say one thing. You know, I'm an artist as much as anything. And uh, I don't know how many of you play in bands or anything, but... Uh, the, I've changed a lot on the band this week and songs we're even just doing now. And so if things get a little squirrely, what are you supposed to do if things get a little squirrely up here? Sing louder and clap harder to cover it up, right? So we're going to let it rip. But uh, all these guys, fantastic friends, fantastic musicians, and learn and grow every day. And uh, we are blessed to be their brothers, amen, and sisters. So. All right, so we're going to let it rip. You guys get up here. Roger's going to open us in prayer, right? Isn't that what we discussed? I so, I was yeah, you are later. <laughs> yeah, I got it, Mark. Prayer for now. <laughs> <laughs> I am ready. <laughs> so open us in Lord, uh, we thank you for letting us come together this beautiful evening. After a beautiful day, we are here to enjoy each other, to enjoy the love that you've given us, and to look forward to the love that you've prepared for us in heaven. We praise you in your son Jesus' holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. Where are you my water? Grab my water, and I'm ready to go. I was asked if I thought that it was summer. I don't know why I was asked that. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> but I'm hoping it's summer before it's winter. Give me one more slide, Sharon. Don't make us wait for the first line. What? There it is, yep. What? Huh? What? Huh? What? So here's the plan as far as I know. This is always, <laughs> this service is a work in progress. So whatever we do this month, if you got a better idea, we'll try it next month, whatever. My plan is, because uh, we've rehearsed and practiced and all that stuff, so we're going to do that. Then we're going to go eat. But the musicians, if they're true musicians, will just scarf and get back to playing music, right? And so that's what I'm planning on doing. That's what you guys plan on doing? All right. And I don't have to worry because Lars said he was doing the sermon tomorrow. So. Right. One, two, three. <laughs> Oh, 
Don't be slow, boys. I should not be moved. One, two, three. tell you what entertaining is. I told my wife last night I was thinking of going out and playing music at restaurants and she burst out laughing. <laughs> 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 then, well, there goes 
their plan. Am I in trouble? <laughs> So now we do have one of everybody's favorites, right? In the garden, in bluegrass style. So how many of you have ever sang in the garden and clapped to it? <laughs> so, so one, two, three. One of my favorite bluegrass uh, slow songs, and it's done every uh, lots of different ways. Some people do it fast, some people do it slow, lots of different chords, but I've never heard anybody do it close to this. So, <laughs> the three men on the mountain that's an Easter song, Jesus on the cross. How many of you have heard of Jesus? <laughs> All right, I love it. Half of you raise your hand. So, <laughs> he used to play for the Cubs, Yvonne DeJesus, right? So, anyway. Uh -huh. So we'll do this song, slow it down a little bit. Tree come down. 
upon Calvary And the man in the middle was Jesus He died for you and me Should have repeated that, eh? Okay. Sometimes it's difficult, but we are able to play a song differently every time we play it. <laughs> Not necessarily by uh, the way we practice it. But I'm amazed, actually, sometimes when we rehearse and it just clicks and we did it completely differently than we just did it five minutes ago, but it still worked. God's with us. And I think we've gotten to know each other's playing a little bit. But mostly because God's with us. Amen. There's a long black train coming down the line, beating off the souls that are lost in crime. Rails of sin, only evil remains. Watch out, brother, for that long black train. You can look to the heavens, you can look to the sky, you can find redemption. Staring back 
everybody's there But it's only destination is the middle of nowhere Cause there's victory in the Lord, I say Victory in the Lord Cling to the Father and His Holy Name And don't go right So which train are you on? Train going to heaven? Train going to hell? Or are you confused? That, that's the thing. As most Christians, it's an interesting question if you go around this world. How many of you have been all the way around the world? So, anyways, part of it anyways. Uh, but you ask people, are you going to heaven? Gone to church their whole lives? You know, been pro confessed themselves to be Christians their whole life? And you ask them, are you going to heaven? And they go, I don't know. And that's sad to me. So uh, as part of being a pastor here, I want to uh, teach you what is right. And what is right is what is godly, not what I think is right and not what you think is right. That, like I teach you all the time, there's a huge difference between earthly right and godly right. And it is uh, my job to teach you. But I want a church. I envision a church. Uh, people will know that you're from Portage Prairie United Methodist Church because if they say, are you going to heaven, what's your answer? Yes! yes! <laughs> And be glad about it. Nothing is more disappointing than standing up here and say in the church like I do for those of you that aren't here every Sunday morning. But uh, I say, are you going to heaven? You know, and, yeah. <laughs> it's like, no way, man. <laughs> Let's be excited. Let's be glad. So we're nearing the end of the first part, then this uh, sermon. Are you doing sermon today or tomorrow, Lars? Yeah, exactly. Both, I think, is what I heard. So anyway, do the old rugged cross, and like I say, this, uh, you know, I've written a few songs that we do, but uh, the old rugged cross is the most famous hymn, and this is ours, you know. It was written and performed first, basically, in Niles, the, this part of the country, and we should be really proud of that, and this should be one of our favorite songs. How many of you have this memorized? So I'll give you a little short story. Uh, I'm not much of a worship leader. I'm not a great worship leader because you have to have the songs exactly right, right? So when I had the bluegrass band, I know the four verses, and I can get most of the words right, but I sing them in every kind of order, and you know? And so uh, this whole thing, having to have it in the right order, being up here, so because people are reading them, and so you have to have them right. Because I like, I play most time with my shut, preferably. Uh, so. Uh, anyways, enough talking. Isn't this a wonderful song, though? Jesus paid the price. Jesus gave his life. And why did he give his life? Because he loves you. Feel that love. Know that love. Let it permeate every inch, every molecule of you. Jesus loves you. Period. So, one, two, three.
Now give me a chance to get a drink. With these lights, I think I'll still do better with my cheaters here. Uh -huh. Reading here is Matthew chapter 27, verses 57 through 66, having to do with Jesus being buried. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arithmea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered him, ordered it to be given to him, and Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen shroud 
and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had cut in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the entrance of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how that impostor said while he was still alive, After three days I will rise. Therefore, order the tomb to be made secure until the third day, lest his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people. He has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go make it as secure as you can. So they went and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. Now, see how quiet it is? <laughs> Anyways, isn't this an awesome evening? Yeah, and you can tell it's sunshiny and warm outside because in the middle of winter when it's 20 below and people are here, they're glad to be here, but you know, there's hardly any sunlight. You know, here in Michigan, this doesn't happen everywhere in the world, but you go a month or two with no sunlight. And it affects us, you know. And so that's why it's one of the advantages of having a bald head. I get twice the light in any room. So anyways, we're going to talk about God. We're going to talk about Jesus. Uh, and that is a wonderful thing. And we are blessed. And as I say often, never let us take for granted that we meet here freely, that there are no police looking to arrest us, uh, that we're not going to be shot when we walk outside of these walls. And that happens to this very day very often. And so uh, I'm just grateful to be here with all of you. The smiling face is a joy, the Christian joy in your heart that's not fake and will never go away. It is a blessing, yeah, that is beyond anything we can imagine. And we're born into that. So, but if I ask you about Easter, you're likely to talk about two things. And what are they? Jesus on the cross and... Easter bunnies, exactly, the biblical Easter bunnies. Good answer, Lars. But we have the cross and then we have the resurrection, but I want to talk tonight about the tomb. The tomb's important, right? And the first thing I want to point out, in case you don't know it, uh, just like Mary was a virgin womb, uh, this tomb is a virgin tomb. It had just been carved, it was unused, and no one had ever been in it. And if you don't know about burials back then, when you died, they put you in there and you decomposed, and at a certain point they came and got your bones and put them in a box or did something else with them. And so it wasn't like us where you go in a casket or, uh, you know, there's other ways of being buried, but very different, something we're not used to. Uh, someone in your family passed away and you went and put their uh, bones in the shed and waited for it to decompose, the police might show up or you might be in some kind of trouble, but back then it's common practice. But we have that tomb, and you know those days, the three days Jesus waited to rise, who thought he had won the battle? That's right, the enemy. Satan thought he had won, it was the death of Jesus. Did Satan know that Jesus was the Son of God? And absolutely, we go back to the temptation, we go back to all those evil spirits, uh, there's no doubt he knew. He knew exactly what it was. He knew it was coming, and yet he thought he had won. He thought when Jesus was in that tomb, that was the end. He thought that uh, he had overcome God, and that was the victorious day for the darkness of the world. But we know better now, amen? We know that Jesus did not stay in that tomb. We know that when the ladies went, and yes, men, who were the first people to see Jesus? The women, and so there's significance there. And so they went to see, they saw the empty tomb, they saw the angels. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? And so that tomb is significant because that is the spot of the transformation. And so one of the blessings that you can get from that tomb, that tomb that everyone overlooks, we go straight from the cross to the resurrection, but the transformation took place in the tomb. The angels were in the tomb. The Shekinah, the light of God was upon the angels as they talked to the ladies. Why do you look for the living among the, or the, living among the dead? And so how does that apply to your life? 
uh, where is your tomb? Where is the point in your life where you say, I've had enough of Satan. I've had enough of being beat up. I've had enough of this world. I've had enough of being disappointed. I've had enough of living in darkness. I've had enough of being lied to. I've had enough of trying to please other people instead of God. And at every point and at every turn, it has always failed. Amen? How many of you know anybody that you can never please? I mean, you know, uh, my favorite thing, give somebody a dollar, they'll ask for what? And you give them $10, they'll ask for what? And you give them $100, they'll ask for what? And if they ask for 1000 they'll give you what? And if you don't give it to them, even after all that money, you're the jerk. Because you should have just kept giving until you didn't have anything more. And that is life. This is this world because where is our reward? It's in heaven. And so what we find in the tomb, what we have to have in our life, and many Christians do not, is that transition. The transition from simply, I believe in God. The transition from, there is a Jesus, there is a God. I believe that, so I go to church. Enough of this makes sense to me that I'm going to accept this as the truth. But where is the transformation? Everywhere in the Bible, there's some kind of transformation. If we look at David... Uh, when was he confronted with his sin? There's a point in his life where everything went good, and then boom, the badness comes. This is when he went with Bathsheba, right? We have Moses lost, and he's not living. He knows he's Jewish, but he hits the road because he killed the dude. But when that burning bush came and God spoke to him, Moses changed. There's a transformation. Abraham was called out of Ur. Before that, how good of a Jew was he? Was he a Jew? What did he do? You don't know, right? But when God called him and he said yes to God, there was a transformation. Now we go from Abram to Abraham. He becomes God's child. And so as you go into this world, as you talk to other people, this transformation, the first question is, do you have a tomb in your Christian faith walk? Do you have a point in time uh, where all the things that Jesus says he requires of you happen. And like we talk about in the Bible studies, as I preach often, uh, the word if is so important, right? So everybody repeat after me. Uh, you have to have a really good memory for this. You ready? If. Yeah. All those things Jesus promises, even you go to Ephesians 2.8, which we covered in the Thursday evening Bible study. Ephesians 2.8 is what, ladies? Faith by grace. Very good. So, you couldn't hear them very loud, but they said it, I know, in their hearts. And so, but even that, that is the transition that is coming to Christ. There is a transformation. There is a tomb. There is a darkness. Your sin, your pain, your suffering needs to go in that tomb. Uh, how many of you have been baptized? And I would assume everyone, but if you haven't, come see me. And uh, if you feel a new growth in faith, then be rebaptized, affirm your baptism. But one of the ways to look at that, we are baptized, and Jesus says, and Paul writes, that our sin, our old self, was put to death under that water, right? And we raise up a new person with a new life in the glory of Christ, in the strength of Christ. But do you live in that strength? Do you live in that glory? And you can answer yourself by, are you, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid to speak about Jesus? Or are you bold to speak about Jesus? Are you afraid you won't have the words? Or do you believe the scripture when it says, I will give you the words. If you are doing my work, I will give you the strength. I will give you the power. And if you aren't doing that, you haven't gone through the grave. Your baptism didn't fully take uh, Martin Luther would yell at me at this point. But that is the power. That is the strength. Fear not. So I'm going to count to three. And everybody say something that you know uh, that you're afraid to say or do as a Christian. But you also know you shouldn't be afraid to do that. One, two, three. See? Y'all are lying. <laughs> That's what I figured would happen. 
But how many times are you supposed to talk to somebody, supposed to do for somebody, for, supposed to forgive someone? And what does it, this is the huge one, and it's as much to me as anybody else. I'm not pointing a finger here at all. Uh, you will be forgiven as. In uh, my life changed. I used to be the kind of person, uh, hold on to my pennies. I, you know, if I'm going to help you, I got, I'm not kind of measuring. What am I going to get back from me helping you? And guess how much I was blessed with that mentality? Yeah, not much at all, if ever. And I quit that. And if somebody truly needs something, I just ask them, what do you need? And it's theirs. Because it's all God's, right? And so, but I can tell you this, uh, and I hate to talk about myself, but I want to also testify at this point. Uh, I'm going to cry, but like the last month, there have been so many blessings that God has brought people doing for me, giving to me, helping me. It is just stunning. And it's, and if I had that selfish heart, which is what I was born with, it's what I was taught, I would not have those blessings. And the Bible says uh, to receive freely, to give freely, right? And so when somebody, your brothers, your neighbors, even your enemies need help, selflessly you help them and what do you need you give it to them you do for them you know Linda uh, gives thanks to this church every time I talk to her for her children and uh, their loss but the church and other people from the churches in their area with the house burning down uh, how blessed they have been but I guarantee you those kids also throughout their lives have given freely amen and so they're simply receiving their blessing at this time and it's that's the, what God wants and if you haven't been to the tomb, if you haven't uh, fully died to self, if you're in this world for what you can get, then you don't get those blessings because you're too worried about being selfish. And so when we look at the tomb, we know that Jesus died. We know that Satan thought he was victorious. But what we have to see is that Jesus is the victor. Now I'm going to read from the book of Acts. For those of you that brought your Bibles from home because you never leave home without them. Amen. So, Bible should be your what? Your best friend. That's right. Amen. So, I'm going to read Acts 13, 26 through 40. And in the ESV version, it says, Brothers, sons of the family of Abraham and those among you who fear God. Do you fear God? In a good way, but uh, your life is in his hands. To us has been sent the message of this salvation. For those who live in Jerusalem and the rulers, because they did not recognize him nor understand the utterances of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath. So they heard the Bible every week, but did they accept it? Did they do what it really told them to do? No. So it was fulfilled them by condemning them. So they're Jews. They knew the scripture. They knew what they were supposed to do. They knew that God was right, all those things. Uh, but they didn't do it. And though they found in him no guilt worthy of death, they asked Pilate to have him executed. And when they had carried out all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and they laid him in a tomb. But God raised him up from the dead. And for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee and Jerusalem, who are now in his witness to the people. And we bring you the good news that what God promised to the fathers, this he has fulfilled to us, their children, by raising Jesus, as it is also written in the second psalm. These are the words from the Old Testament. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. And as for the fact that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption. He has spoken in this way. I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. Therefore, he says also in another psalm, you will not let your holy one see corruption. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. 
that he whom God raised up did not see corruption. Let it be known to you, therefore, brothers, that through this man forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. And by everyone who believes that he is freed from everything from which you could not be freed by the law of Moses. And so my question, what is in your heart? What is dwelling in you? What are your sins? What is your shame? What is your doubt? What keeps you from being fearless? What keeps you from being strong? What keeps you from being bold? All of those things should be where? In the tomb. And that new person that has given all those things that are of Satan. There is nowhere in the Bible where it's God comes to somebody, where Jesus comes to somebody and says, you need to be afraid to talk about me. Go forth and maybe share the gospel, right? That's what Jesus preached everywhere he went. When the apostles went out, you know, they said, excuse me, ma'am, would you like to hear about Jesus? And the person said no, so the apostles walked away, right? Can you show me that anywhere in the Bible? And what I try to preach on these Saturday nights is the good news, but the good news is far more than we claim. If I had a million dollars up here in hundred dollar bills, and I told you just to come up here and take what you wanted, how much would you take? And some of you would not take anything. And some of you might feel guilty, but you might take all of it. I know I'd take as much as I could carry, <laughs> fit in my pockets, like those old shows with the swirling dollar bills and you grab them when you can, you know, that was your reward, some of those things. But the thing with Jesus is, he has given you everything. That doubt, that fear, that shame, that hatred, that I can't forgive, uh, all of us have a list. There is no one here tonight, there is no one that will ever sit here, ever, there was no one who will ever sit in any church anywhere that doesn't have a list. None of us is perfect, right? We all have these things. But the question that I have, the question that God has on my heart for us tonight, when do we truly let those things go? When do we truly give them to him? When do we truly put them in the tomb? And close that door. And finally, live in the love. And live in his mercy. And live in the blessings of Christ without doubt and without fear. So let's bow our heads for a closing prayer to this sermon. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that as we sit here, uh, this room is full of Christians. That these are your people, but I pray your anointing upon those who are here uh, that, that can feel the Holy Spirit searching their soul, searching their heart, that you know them. And I pray your blessing upon them. I pray your anointing on them that you take away what Satan has cast upon them. You take away the pain. You take away the suffering. You take away the selfishness, the arrogance. And, and just fill them with your love. Fill them with your mercy. Fill them with your Holy Spirit so that they can walk through this world boldly, just like Jesus, and proclaim your glory, proclaim your love, proclaim the goodness of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to whoever they meet and wherever they go. May this strength be our strength, which is only found in your Son, Jesus Christ. And all God's beautiful and blessed children say, Amen. I will sing. <laughs>
All right. <laughs> so now a little bit I'll fly away. One, two, three. Is it? Nope. One, two, three. <laughs> the righteous and the holy this train is bound for glory this train this train don't carry no gamblers this train this train don't carry no gamblers this train this train don't carry no gamblers no liars thieves no big shot ramblers this train is bound for glory This train don't carry no liar, she's dreamlined down a midnight flyer. This train don't carry no liar, this train. This train don't carry no con man, this train. This train don't carry no con man, this train. This train don't carry no con man, no wheeler dealers here and gone men. This train don't carry no con man, this train. i 
Just side street walkers, two bit hustlers. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. This train. This train is bound for glory. Don't care enough about the righteous and the holy. This train is bound for glory. Amen. Sound like you've been learning on Sunday mornings. Uh, you know you got the big things. What does God want? Psalm 95. And uh, so for those of you that haven't been here, what I've, this is what the psalm teaches us. He wants thanksgiving, so you put your hands out. And then he wants what? Praise, so you put your hands up. And he wants worship, so you put your hands down. And then he put it all in your heart so you can go out and serve in his holy name. Amen. And so when we come to church, we're doing a little bit all of that. That's why, you know, at this church, we're going to the six-hour service twice a day on Sunday. All right? <laughs> Numbers aren't quite as much as he thought they'd be. <laughs> so, well, we cover all those bases tonight. Obviously, it's much more the praise because we're going to heaven. How can you not be happy? And how can you not be excited? How can you not have the joy in your heart knowing that Jesus died on the cross for you just so you can be forgiven your sins? period yeah all those things put together how can you not have joy how can you not be happy and so when we come here but uh this song uh what we learned about worship and when you read the bible the old testament they rarely use the word i unless it's about sin it's all god god praise god god is good god is wonderful god is good and like i say uh, as you get later and further from christianity the songs instead of being god 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 they become i i i i come to the garden alone amazing grace amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me it's about me and when you read the old testament when you read and study old testament worship it's not about me at all every word Every phrase is God, 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 God. And so uh, this song, we're crying holy unto the Lord. And if we don't shout holy, what will shout holy to God? The rocks. Amen. And so uh, let's praise God. Let's sing out. This is Roger's finest bluegrass song. He's getting better on all of them. It's awesome. <laughs> so this should be peppy, Mr. Van. One, two, three. <laughs>
like a pick graveyard up here. I keep throwing them around and getting them stuck inside my guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Washington blood. How many of you ready for dinner? All right. We're almost there. Himalayan squirrel. 
<laughs> we found him a laying on the road. <laughs> goes with that new person. How I many you know Russ Taff? So, I met him once, hung out with him for a while. So.
get up out of the ground Way down the river What do you think I see? Well, look way down the river What do you think I see? I see a band of angels And they're coming after me On the land and sea. Well, look down yonder, Gabriel. Put your feet on the land and sea. But don't blow your trumpet until you hear from me. can meet you anywhere good day? How many of you ever had a bad day? How many of you ever had a good part of life? How many of you have ever had a bad time in life? When did you need Jesus the most? Yep, every day. But those dark times, those sad times, those broken hearted times, those times of loss, uh, they're hard enough to get through. Imagine trying to get through them without Jesus. You know, and that is the true darkness in the world, living a life without Christ and having to struggle through all the things we struggle through, but having no hope, no purpose, no reason besides maybe making money or, you know, but uh, what a gift we have in Jesus. Amen. So now we'll sing uh, the song, what the Bible, this comes from scripture. It's what God put on my heart. You know, the Holy Spirit told me to write down, but I think it's, I love to sing it. Because when we sing this song, if you look around, there's just something about it because it's Holy Spirit inspired. You can't help but smile. <laughs> so we'll sing our song. Do you remember how it goes? One, two, three, one, 
two, three, four. Some days good, some days bad. On a bitch you can rely. But we have Jesus by our side to help us do our trials. So hey, hey, sing with me. Wait for George and Doris. Hey, hey, sing with me and drink your tears for As you always do with our Portage Prairie song. Father, we thank you for this awesome evening that we could be here, that we could praise you, praise you, and praise you. The joy in our hearts sent straight up to heaven for your glory, for your honor. And we just are thrilled to be here, thrilled to be your children, thrilled to live in your blessing, your love, your Shekinah. And uh, for the people that are gathered here, we just uh, give thanks. And may all the glory be for you. And as we go to eat, we will say the grace. Dear Heavenly Father, bless this food to our bodies. Bless the hands that prepared this food. Uh, and we just give all of ourselves in whole, not part, to you. And in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's beautiful and blessed children, say with joy and glee, Amen. Amen. That is right. What a beautiful sound.